Yo, yo, what's going on, y'all? So I have a revelation coming from Holy Spirit. This revelation is coming from the second census. It is the registration of the Gadianites. And Holy Spirit gave me the number 4050. And the number 4050 means abundance and super fluty. And it also means the number 40. So the scripture that's attached to abundance and super fluity is 1 Corinthians 4 and 8. So this is about um, a marriage that is getting ready to take place or a marriage that has been registered. And I can't even um, look in my phone to tell you the exact meaning of register. Y'all know I like to give y'all like you know what I mean? So, but because my phone is dead, my other phone is dead. So just look up um, what the word registered means, because this is a marriage that has been registered. OK. And the father says that it is going to be a marriage that is abundant and has super flutiness. OK, so the scripture that's attached to it is First Corinthians. Four. So I'm going to read six through eight. I have applied these things to you myself and Apollos for your benefit, brothers, so that you may learn from us not to go beyond what is written, so that none of you will be inflated with your pride in favor of one person over against another. So for some somebody, for this group of people, your spouse was revealed to you. Your spouse was revealed to you. You know who your spouse is, your spouse is because the father did not want you to go what, beyond what was written for you. He did not want your pride to get inflated um, in favor of one person over or against another. So this is why the father had revealed to you who your person was because he didn't want you to go beyond what was already written and he didn't want your pride to get involved and you put favor of one person against another when he already told you who your spouse was. So for this group of people, your spouse has already been revealed to you for this reason. So you know who your person is. Who confers distinction to you? So this... There's no distinction. The father made it very clear who you are to this person. This person knows that you are their wife or you are their husband. There is no distinction to be made. It's very clear. And the father made it clear so that you wouldn't go beyond what is written and so that you wouldn't put favor in another person against the person that he has ordained for you. What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, why are you boasting as if you have not received it? So the father is saying you have what it is that you need. Everything you need, you have it. Everything in this person that you need, you have it. I gave it to you. I told you who they are. So, and you have received it. You have received this person. It, this person has been delivered to you, released to you. So why are you boasting as if you had not received it? The father is saying he already showed you and told you who your person is. Why are you acting as if he didn't show you and tell you who your person is? You are already satisfied. You have already grown rich. You have become kings without us. Indeed, I wish that you had become kings so that we might become kings with you. So the father says, you are satisfied. You have already grown rich in the things that he and in, in what he has given you. There is satisfaction in what he has given you. There is richness in what he has given you. You have already become a king in what he has given you. There are going to be other people who are going to wish that they did the same things you did, 
have the same life patterns that you had in order to get where you are going and and to get what you are receiving. So the father says, you know who your person is. There is no distinction to be made. The father says, you know who your person is. There's no distinction to be made. He told you for the reason that you wouldn't go beyond what is written and that you wouldn't put favor upon another person against the person that he has chosen for you. He said he has delivered this thing to you. You have received it. So do not go around boasting as if you don't already have a wife or you don't already have a husband because the father has told you who your husband and who your wife is. So don't act like you have not received your husband or your wife already. Don't go beyond what is written and do not bestow favor upon somebody else against the one who the father has for you already or told you is your wife or your husband already. The father says you are satisfied and you are a king. There will be people who wish that they had the kind of wife that you have. They're going to wish that they're going to be the kind of king that you can be, that you are. Okay, the next scripture that's attached to um, it is. Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 31. And it reads, and also led away the inhabitants whom he assigned with who he assigned to work with saws, iron picks, and iron axes to put to work at the brick mold. That is what he did to all the Amorite cities. David and all the soldiers then returned to Jerusalem. This is entitled Amorite War Ends. So when this union comes together, when you and your husband and your wife, when y'all come together, the war will end with the enemies everything will come to an end there will be peace you and your person will return to peace and these people who were sent to attack you with saws iron picks iron axes and to put up um blockages for you all of this will cease all of this will come to an end at the joining and the union of you two coming together Okay, and that is the message. Let's see if Holy Spirit has anything else that you would like to pour into me from heaven to earth so that I can provide clarity, wisdom, and knowledge to your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask that you rebuke any demonic force, entities, and influence and distraction. Father, I ask that you cover this message, your children, your messenger and anyone under the sound of my voice in the name of under the name and in the name and under the blood of Jesus for I doors to you that all things are possible and it's in your name that I pray amen as he was passing through a field of grain on the Sabbath which is today his disciples began to make a path while picking the heads of the grain at this, the Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing this? It is unlawful on the Sabbath. He said to them, have you ever read what David did when he was in need and he had his companions were hungry? How he went to the house of God when Abathar was the high priest and ate bread of offering that only the priests could lawfully eat and shared it with his companions. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That is why the son of man is Lord even on the Sabbath. So there is some people who um, don't want to see this union come together. And the father says he is a savior all the time. Okay. He's not. He. he Christ says he is a savior all the time. He is a savior all the time. The Sabbath was made for man. 
was made for man, not man for Sabbath. Okay? This day was made for man. Man was not made for this day. And I am a savior every day. Some people really don't think that you deserve this union, this marriage. They really don't think that you deserve it. But it's not up to them. It's not up to them. 11-11. It's not up to them. It's not up to them. The father says he is the savior. And he decides. Well, the father is the judge. Christ is the savior. But you know what I mean. Christ is comes to save and if he wants to save this union this marriage these people this couple then that's exactly what he's going to do if these people are open and willing and ready and able to follow him his laws and his commands and they want to follow him and they are doing this on their own free will then the father is going to save them. He's going to save this union and he's going to save this marriage and he's going to save these couples individually and together. It's not up to you what you think Christ should do. It's not up to you when you think Christ should save these people. It's not up to you if you think today is not the right day for it to happen because whatever reason you have in your mind that you have come up with. And this may even be um, other other people of God who feel like um, you don't deserve this thing. There may it may be other people of God who feel like you don't deserve this marriage. Okay, that's the message, y'all. The Father told you who your person is, and abundance is going to come from this marriage. There are going to be people who don't want to see it, but it's not up to them. There are going to be people who think you don't deserve it, but thank God they're not God. <laughs> but thank God they're not God. Thank God they're not the judge. Thank God they're not the savior. Because if it was up to them, you wouldn't have nothing. No ma'am, no ham, no turkey, no bacon. No, no. <laughs> That's how they would be. No, no. Some people just don't want you to have it because it's you. You ain't did nothing to nobody. Some of them, Some people just don't want you to have it because it's you. Just cause you, just cause it's you, they don't want you to have it. And the father said that ain't good enough. <laughs> that ain't good enough. He he want to give it to you just cause it's you. They don't want you to have it cause it's you. Well, thank God for a mustard seed. Peace.